Hey, uh, thank you very much. Um, so uh, I am Dr. Andrew Cunningham. I'm a lecturer in ESA, uh, and I'm a researcher with the Australian Centre for Interactive Virtual Environments. Um, and today I want to talk about visualisation and immersive analytics, and then talk about some opportunities for AI in that space, but also for SMEs. Uh, and I realise this is the last talk of the day, so I'll try and keep it a bit light and a little bit fun. Um, but first, I have to plug our centre. So we are the largest concentration of augmented reality and virtual reality researchers in Australia. And I've been told that means that we're the largest in the Southern Hemisphere, because if you're the largest in Australia, you tend to be largest in the Southern Hemisphere. Uh, we're unique in that we're not just computer scientists, we're also, also health scientists, architects, art and design scientists and uh, researchers. So we really a uh, cross-disciplinary team um, of researchers and, and that lends new capabilities to, to what we can achieve. Uh, and finally, uh, we published more research papers in augmented reality, reality than any university or research organization in the world, um, which is pretty exciting. So today, anyway, today I want to talk about um, why visualization is important. I want to talk about what immersive analytics is. Uh, and then I want to talk about where the opportunities for AI are in the space um, and opportunities for SMEs as well. So over the past few days, we've been talking about data. It's everywhere all the time. I don't need to harp on about this. There's a huge volume and variety of data, including sensors, business data, servers, social networks, transportation data. So huge amounts of data, you're probably collecting gigabytes a day, um, if not more. Um, and the question becomes, how do we make sense of this data? Uh, and one approach is we can use AI techniques, we can use um, statistical models, machine learning, um, algorithms, and so, so forth, to tell us what is important about that data. And when some people think about visualization, they think about these large dashboard displays where there's green lights and red lights, and a green light means everything's good, and a red light means that an automated algorithm has told us something's wrong. And this is not the type of visualization that we're actually interested in in our group. Um, because these automated methods have some limitations, um, and a really nice example of that is this ANSCOM's quartet. So we actually have four different data sets here. A lot of you are probably familiar with this already. Four different data sets, but they all have the same statistical value, uh, statistical properties. So you can see here, they all sum up to the same value. They will average the same value. They all have the same standard deviation. But if we do a really simple visualization of those four different data sets, um, we see that they tell us vastly different data stories. So just by doing a very simple scatterplot visualization, we actually gain a bit of insight into what that data is actually saying. Uh, here's another nice example. This is from Autodesk Research um, of the same concept. Here we have all the same means and standard deviations, at least the, the major parts. Um, but we can see that the visualization is showing vastly different um, images of, of what that data is actually telling us. And it even shows a Tyrannosaurus Rex. So this is kind of an example of how um, a bad actor could actually come into one of these systems and manipulate our data if we don't have these sanity checks. So at its most basic level, um, we say that visualization is just really good for sanity checks. It's good for checking your data and checking your insights and making sure you're on the right track. But there's another level, um, a deeper level of, of usefulness for visualization, and that's these human in the loop problems. These human in the loop problems tend to be a, a combination between human judgment and autonomous systems. So what we have in these sort of human in the loop systems is the human can supervise an autonomous system, can lend their um, expertise and knowledge and, and goals and aims, um, they can supervise an autonomous system and their algorithm statistical models to provide a status to the human. And you create this, this loop where you find more meaningful um, insights within your data. Um, the really great example of this um, is we were, uh, had a talk with the Australian Taxation Office. Uh, and they had this, this use case where they were looking for people committing tax fraud, organisations committing tax fraud. And it was a really interesting problem because to commit tax fraud, you create these shell companies, you create companies within companies, you create companies in the Caribbean islands and so forth. So you create this really complex network of organizations. And the problem that the ATO had is that they knew tax fraud was being committed, but they didn't know what it looked like because the people that were committing tax fraud were trying to, uh, were trying to stay two steps ahead of, of the, um, the investigators. 
And so this is where this is a very human and loop problem because if we can introduce human understanding, um, supervising autonomous systems uh, in exploration, then we can potentially uh, have greater capability of catching these, these issues beforehand. So this is the concept behind visual analytics. Um, visualizations are generally about these still pictures. Visual analytics is the application of visualization um, that focuses on these interactive systems to reach analytical reasoning. So rather than static images, we're starting to create these interactive systems to let um, the user actually dive into the data and find new insights. Um, one example of this is the narrative visualization for law enforcement project. Um, that was mentioned before. Um, so this was a project with the Data2 Decision CRC, and I know there's a few Data2 Decisions people here today, which is really great to see. Um, and basically what we're doing here is we're taking uh, lots of data from law enforcement, um, integrating it into a, a visual analytical system by telling the story within that data. And what you can see here is that the user is actually able to interrogate through that data and explore it um, at a, a different level than they could uh, independently once it's all integrated into the visualizations. So the user can dive down, find new insights through interaction. So what we say here is that um, visual analytics is really suited to understanding these human in the loop problems. So we can use these interactive systems and find more deeper understanding in our data. So that kind of leads into what is immersive analytics. And so immersive analytics is basically taking some of these visual analytics concepts of visualization and interaction and moving it into the immersive space. Traditionally, when we think about immersive visualization, we think about these, these large cave-like systems. So this is the cave two down at um, Monash, and this was a $2 million system. Um, it's $2 million, it's not three-dimensional, it's very expensive, requires a lot of space and requires people to maintain it. So we kind of think that these sort of more um, commercial systems that are coming out now are a viable alternative to these cave-like systems because they provide the depth perception, but they, only, they also only cost you $400. So this Rift S here is $400 and you get a fully immersive um, visualization system. So this is, this is where we think immersive analytics is heading. And the key tenets of immersive analytics is about um, space to think, depth perception, and embodiment. These are the key concepts that we try to promote within immersive analytics. Uh, and what I'm going to do now, um, instead of explaining each of those things, I'm going to jump into a demo to show you what it actually looks like. So just bear with me. So this. Hopefully you guys can see that. Um, this is a system called IMAXES that we developed with in uh, collaboration with Monash University. Uh, and this is a really a, a really key example of what immersive analytics is. So I've got my headset on. Um, I've got this immersive environment. Uh, I just want to pull up my data sets here. Toggle them all on. Uh, and the data set I have today is actually a wine data set. So. It'd probably be better if I got Priscilla up here to talk about what I'm actually looking at here. Um, but I'll, I'll try and get through this. So this is a wine data set. There's, um, I think, 100, 200 wines actually sampled in this um, from Portugal, I believe. Um, and what we have is we have dimensions that show us the, the kind of chemical makeup of the various wines. So these are all histograms uh, representing that. Um, but we also have some quality assessment and um, wine types, so it's either red or white. Um, now I'm just going to pull up a quick menu just to make this a bit nicer. Um, and so what you can see now is I'm, I'm immersed in my data and what I can actually do is I can go up and actually grab um, my data dimension and start playing with it. So I can see this is the type of wine. We have red wines in this data and we have white wines. There's more white sampled in this data than red, which is kind of interesting. Um, but this is nice, this is, this is called embodied interaction. I'm actually grabbing things and manipulating it. Um, what I might like to do is actually look at density. And I'll try not to hit anything here. I'm gonna look at density and compare it to type. And so to do that in um, IMAXES, I can hold it together like this and I create a parallel connected plot, uh, or I can hold it like this and then create a scatter plot. So I'm gonna do this and start looking at the wine and I can kind of see 
oh, you know, red wines tend to be more dense than white wines. So we've got white more distributed down the bottom and reds tend to be distributed more, more to the top of the density. Um, so that's kind of interesting, but I can get a bit more interesting now with some more basic interactions. I've got my 2D scatter plot here. Maybe I want to look at um, uh, sulfur dioxide in the wines. So I can actually create a 3D scatter plot here now. So this is my 3D scatter plot created just by adding another axis to this space. Um, and I can rotate that and, and look at it and I can see the distribution of this, um, this data set in those two different dimensions across type, density, and um, total sulfur dioxide. Um, so this is, this is pretty nice. Um, what I can do is I can throw them away and I just kind of throw them away like that. That gets rid of the dimensions. But maybe I want to start, start making a, an assessment of these wines. So I want to see what's better out of red and white wine. I can pull this together um, and we actually have a quality assessment here. Um, so uh, I can see here that there is a, a quality rating and it goes from three to nine. There's white wines which are rated nine, but there's no nine reds for some reason. I find that very odd. Um, but you can quickly see how people can start to interrogate this data and play with it and explain information in a way that you can't in two dimensions. Some, some emergent interactions pop out, so I can actually grab this and, and scrub this along and see how type correlates to these, these various dimensions. Um, and I can do this in a space. I've got all this space around me to interact with. I'm a bit scared of hitting things at the moment, but I can, uh, I can interact with all this space around me. I'm not limited to the, the small field of view of my screen. So that's a really, a really quick demo of what immersive analytics is and some of the key concepts um, in this system called uh, IMAXIS. Um, one of the great things that we did with IMAX is, is that we actually open sourced it. So if you're an SME or a researcher and you actually want to play with these immersive analytics concepts, you can actually Google IMAX and download that system and have a play with it and, and see, look at your data in interactive, interactive terms. So um, what we did with the IMAX system is we ran a follow-up study after developing it. Um, this was with the University of Maryland, and we ran it with the Bureau of Statistics in the US. And one of the nice things that we found while, demo, uh, while uh, studying the system is that it's a really good technique or um, a really good approach for data storytelling or explaining insights within the data. Um, we gave it to some data analysts, gave the system, they got to tell stories within the data, and they found that it was a nice way of doing it. And you could see there, where a data analyst can actually pull together dimensions and explain the insights that they're seeing. It's, it's a very compelling, engaging way of, of approaching that. Um, some more recent work uh, is in situated analytics. So this is, uh, that was in virtual reality. reality. We can actually move into augmented reality using the Microsoft HoloLens. So this is the same, it's a headset you put on. And then you can see your data integrated within the real world here. So this is a core sample um, taken uh, from, the, uh, uh, from the ground on a project of the Minex CRC. And currently, this is just a single tray, but they've got hundreds of these trays that they look at. And they tend to have a laptop next to them. They take the laptop along um, and try to correlate the data that they see on the laptop with this physical thing that they can see in the real world. And so what we want to do, or what we're doing, is moving that into the augmented reality headset space, letting the the researchers actually look at the data correlated in space um, in the real world. So, so I guess to kind of sum up the immersive analytics um, space, we really uh, we look for interesting data sets to solve human in the loop problems by building novel visualization systems. And I think using these sort of immersive immersive technologies is a really compelling, engaging way of exploring data. Uh, lastly, I realize we're running short on time, but I'll just finish off with some future opportunities. Um, and this is kind of a moonshot of where I would like to see immersive analytics heading in the future and how we can integrate some sort of AI concepts into that. So this is a really simple scenario. We have some geoscientists deciding the next mining site. Imagine in this scenario that they're all actually wearing headsets. So not these big bulky things, but they might actually look like glasses. Um, and then they they asked to see some data placed in front of them. And that data should be placed contextually, spatially aware into that space. So this is where we can use some sort of AI techniques to actually recognize where they're sitting, where's a good place to place that information and present that data into a shared space. 
And then these um, assistants are, are a very powerful tool for these analytical processes. So actually being able to use your voice and ask, um, where does the, um, where do we correlate average rainfall? How do we correlate average rainfall? And the system can go out there, grab heterogeneous data and present that into that space. So I think this is, this is the kind of future for immersive analytics is actually having these AR headsets, integrating the data into space um, and using AI to, to complement that, that analysis and sense making. So takeaways, um, really visualization enables this human loop decision making. So it really helps you um, make sense of your data. Um, immersive analytics is about space to think and this direct interaction, and it really helps um, supporting data storytelling. Uh, and if you have any interesting data sets, um, please come have a chat. Uh, there's my email address and uh, website. Um, so yeah, we're always looking for interesting data sets to visualize in immersive systems. Thank you. Thank you very much, Andrew. Because of time constraints, we will have uh, make room for just one question. Great, that's really cool. Um, do you think, I guess sort of double barreled question, do you think it's more efficient than traditional techniques of looking at it? And is it maybe more about socializing the data exploration process? So like in your moonshot there, it's a group of people sitting together looking at it, which might be more difficult around the screen. I was wondering what your thoughts were. Yeah, I think it, it depends on the, the context and the problem space that you're dealing in. But you're right, it's, it's, we see it as good for um, social exploration. So the work with MinX CRC, they do a lot of collaborative exploration. They're very um, uh, qualitative as well as quantitative, um, and they're making assessments of the data, and they do that in the collaborative space. So where there's a collaborative space, I think it's very useful. Also, where there's geospatial, geospatial tends to be naturally three-dimensional or often is three-dimensional, and that's probably where these immersive technologies come in as well. But yeah, there's, we definitely don't say it's a silver bullet to solve all your analytic problems.